it's interesting how you know i, I mean this this is uh, your renewal cycle is based on when you initiate the contract but it's interesting because all three of us right now are, are seeing a lot of these invoices come in from from the software vendors that our, our clients predominantly deal with it's just kind of a strange timing coincidence so you know it's top top of mind um but i think you know it's um it's easy sometimes to just pay it because it's a you know it, it's on a, some sort of recurring cycle um but a lot of times uh the way that these invoices are itemized is that there's some recurring piece typically the ones related to um either the the, the return filing service or the actual transaction billing that the software company is doing for running the transactions through its system uh, but then there's kind of the the professional services aspect of it uh, and there's certain line items on there that may no longer be applicable um, especially if you're no longer in your first cycle um, so we're we're seeing some of that I, I know Mary you were saying that you were seeing some of that on, on your clients yeah I think you know one of the ones in particular that we saw um, which is interesting because we we've been integrated for a couple years now, but then they did a transition in their GL system. So it went from, you know, QuickBooks to a NetSuite kind of situation. So they reestablished a sandbox for testing. Um, and then on their renewal, it automatically renewed their sandbox, which they didn't need. Right. Because um, they're already integrated. They don't need to run testing. And it's something that should you need, you can add on after the fact. Um, so that was just something that kept reoccurring. And what was interesting in particular is if you are going to some of the, the things that we've seen, is if you're going to cancel part of your subscription, you still have to do that within the, like that 30 day rescission period, not just, you know, after the fact, oh, we don't need this, you're still kind of paying for it. So you have to affirmatively go in, cancel this level of service. Um, so in this particular instance, they are still paying for a sandbox they don't need that they are th that they have then canceled. So it's just kind of those interesting nuances that happen, you know, when you're on a recurring subscription model um, to be wary of. Yeah, the the sandbox is a great example. Um, I what I saw with one of my clients uh, is the um, the integration support piece. Um, uh, a lot of times in in your you know just when you're integrating um, uh, the systems at the very onset, you, you purchase that heightened level of of professional services from from the company. Um, but again, just like you said, Mary, you have to affirmatively turn that off. You know the integration. Once complete, the, the systems are connected. You don't really need that level of support, if, if at all. Um, but you have to affirmatively remove that from from the uh, uh, the billing um, renewal. Uh, so you know we did that, and, and that was that was nice savings. Yeah, something else too to be wary of is when you transition from one integration to another. Again, kind of going from a QuickBooks to a NetSuite example, um, it kind of terminates so in this instance i can't remember if it actually like terminated our quickbooks con you know contract and renewed it to net sweep but at actual whatever their newest renewal was quickbooks was still linked as an integration so they were then paying on their renewal for quickbooks and net suite fortunately we caught it in time but again then they had to go in and affirmatively cancel the quickbooks integration when it's like, well, isn't that kind of implied when I tell you I don't need it and I'm connected to NetSuite? Um, so I think, and Stacey and I worked on a client that had four integrations that they were no longer using, um, that they were continually paying for, and it was about ten or $15,000. So it was a lot, a lot of money that was just on automatic renewal. Um, and so I think kind of the takeaway is never assume anything when it comes to your contracts um, with with some of these softwares, like it's implied that if I'm using NetSuite, I don't need to pay for QuickBooks, but you know, not as not true. That's a good life lesson too. <laughs> right? Same thing with my marriage. Never assume right. anything. Just always speak, always communicate. 
and <laughs> go forth. Take care. Bye.